Hey, fourth graders, it's Mrs. Spears. I just wanted to give you a little preview of what we're getting to learn how to do this week. Um, we've learned how to take numbers and put them into expanded form. Don't worry, we're going to practice that some more this week too. So if you don't remember how to do that or you wanted more practice on that, that's what we're going to do. But we're going to use expanded form to help us with multiplication. Sometimes it's really challenging to multiply big numbers by another number. So if we use expanded form, that kind of helps us make that challenge into like bite-sized pieces to make it a little easier to tackle. So we're going to start building area models for our multiplication problems. So this lesson kind of was there to help us make some connections with that. I'm just going to show you a couple of those problems and then we'll get into area models as the week goes on. So I'm on page 91. You can do these along with me so that you can get a feel for what's coming. So I'm actually going to start with number six. I'm going to start all the way down here because this is something that should look familiar to you from last year. Last year you learned how to multiply using arrays. And remember an array is just an organized group of, usually it's like counters or pictures or something, um, organized into rows and columns of even groups. Um, and we use that to kind of help us figure out the best way to multiply or count whatever the picture is. So it says Michael ranged his pennies in the following display. So these are pennies. And he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven down. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen across. So he's got 13 groups of seven. So this would be like one group of seven, two groups of seven, three groups of seven. Or you can think of it as seven groups of 13 rows. So it's different. I mean, it means the same thing either way, but it just depends on how you look at it. So I know I need to multiply seven times 13 to figure out how many pennies are all together in this array. Problem is I don't know seven times 13 off the top of my head. That's not on my multiplication chart either, but I can actually split this up into more bite-sized pieces. So I'm actually gonna take this and divide it up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm gonna put a little line here. I still have seven groups, except now I have, instead of 13 all the way across, I now have seven groups of 10 and seven groups of three. And now I can multiply in more bite-sized pieces. So instead of trying to figure out what seven times 13 is, I'm going to figure out what seven groups of 10 is and then figure out what seven groups of three is. And then I'll just put them back together. So if I have seven groups of 10, that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. So I've got 70 pennies in this group right here. And if I have seven times three, if I'm not sure what seven times three is, I can count those up. But I know that seven times three is 21. So all together, he has 70 pennies plus 21 pennies. And boom, he's got 71 or 91 pennies. Now, if I did 13 times seven, we'll learn how to do this in a couple weeks. I get the same answer. But again, we haven't learned how to do this yet, but you can do this pretty easy because you know that you can find these seven times 10 and seven times three on your chart if you're not sure, or you might know them off the top of your head. But this is, what we're doing this week is based off of this array. We're kind of taking the idea of an array and using it with bigger numbers than you used last year. So I'm gonna look at number two. They gave me a little grid box to kind of help me keep organized while I'm doing this problem. They want me to do five times 13. Again, I don't know what that is off the top of my head, but if I break that up into 13's expanded form, which is 10 plus three, remember we have the tens place separated from the ones place. If I do that, then I can multiply five times the group of 10 and five times the group of three, just like I did down here. I did seven, instead of seven times 13 groups, I did seven times 10 groups, and then I did seven times three groups, and then I put it back together. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna do five times the 10, and five times the three, and then put them back together. So to draw a picture of that, I know I have five down the side here. So one, two, three, four, five. 
So five groups of 13. So I'm going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's that mark right there. Okay. And so instead of sitting there trying to figure out what 5 times 13 is, I'm going to split it into easier bite-sized pieces. I'm going to do a group of 10 and a group of 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's right there. We've got these guys. That's 5 times 10. And um, these ones, this is 5 times 3. 5 groups of 3, 5 groups of 10. 5 times 10. And 5 groups of 3. 5 times 10 is 50, and 5 times 3 is 15, 50 plus 15 is 65. And if you were to go back in and count all of those squares that we colored in, there would be 65 of them. So this is a really cool strategy to use for multiplication, especially as we get into bigger and bigger numbers. If we just had like 5 times 6, we could look that up on a chart, or we might know that off our heads, and we could fill that in pretty easy. But as we get into bigger and bigger numbers, they're not going to show up on a chart anymore. So we have to figure out ways to break them down into pieces so we can figure them out on our own and then we can put them back together in the end. So if I've got this one right here, it says 4 times 14. They already drew it for me. So I've got four groups of 14 across. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. But they split it up into a group of 10 and a group of 4. You see how these ones are darker? So 10 and 4. Which if we put 10 and 4 back together, we get 14. So now I can do 4 times 10, which is this array right here. And 4 times 4, which is this array over here. 4 times 10 is 40. And... 4 times 4 is 16. We put those back together and we get 56. Same thing. We add all those boxes together. We go through and count all of them. We're going to get 56. They also did it with base 10 blocks over here. Um, it's just a different kind of picture, but it means the exact same thing. So with this one, they had 3 times 17, 3 groups of 17. But they split the 17 into groups of 10 and groups of 7 by using the base 10 blocks. So we still have three, three groups of 10 and three groups of seven because we took this 17 and they split it up 10 plus seven. Three times 10 over here is 30. Three times seven is 21. Put them all back together and I get 51. So that is like I said, we're going to get into this more with some bigger area models with some bigger numbers, but this just kind of helps you connect what you learned last year with arrays to get back into area models with what we did, what we're going to do this year. Area models and arrays are the same thing pretty much, um, but area models are more used um, without individual little spaces, but we'll get into that. Um, if you have any questions about this, let me know when I see you tomorrow.